Mr. Goldman, I'm here to take your statement for a second time. Your former psychiatrist, Dr. Edward Smith, has accompanied me for this interrogation. What the hell are you doing here? He asked me to come. RCP came to my clinic. Well, what did you tell them? Please, please don't listen to this guy. Relax. Let's talk inside where you can calm down. Well, you know my name is Detective Chris, and I'm accompanied by your former doctor, Mr. Edward. He traveled here to give us a hand in the investigation. We had a couple questions that he helped us to clarify. What the hell did you tell him? Please calm down, Mr. Goldman. We're about to start. I advised you of your rights last week during the first interrogation, but I'm going to do so again. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to consult an attorney before answering any questions. And you have the right to have an attorney present during this interrogation. Is that clear? Yes. Okay. Well, were you in Victoriaville when a girl named Lily Polanski went missing? Yes. First off, why did you move to Montreal? I can move wherever I want. Only a suspect is under house arrest. I'll ask again. Why? I was tired of living in the village. I felt isolated. It looks like you left in a hurry. Since you didn't have time to cancel your gym membership, nor pick up your skis from the repair shop, or are you planning to travel 60 kilometers every time you want to do some kind of sport? I forgot to cancel my gym membership and I didn't know my skis were repaired, if that makes you happy. First off, let's start with the night when Lily Polanski went missing. Where were you on the evening of January 26th? I was at my place. Were you with someone? No, I was alone. What were you doing? Watching TV, surfing the web. Our investigators checked your computer, and there's no evidence of you ever surfing the web. The TV was on, though. I don't remember. Uh, I guess I was checking old pictures or something uh, and watching TV. I, I was really tired that day. I remember having a lot of beers and taking a few naps on the couch. What were you watching? Nothing really. I was just keeping myself distracted. You don't remember what you were watching? Not really. Did you go anywhere during the day? To buy food or something? No. So you didn't move your car. You didn't move your bike. You didn't go anywhere during the day. No, I didn't go anywhere. Okay. Do you recognize these boots? Yes. You have some boots like these, right? Yes, that's right. We checked in your credit history and we saw you bought these boots a year ago. We searched your house for them and we couldn't find them. Where are they? I bought a new pair recently because I couldn't find mine. My house was a mess, I, I just couldn't find them. So your boots went missing around the same time that Lily Polanski was missing? Yes, but I don't see a need to link that. We compared the prints that we found outside Lily Polanski's house. Don't you think they look identical? Man, I've never been there. Thousands of people have boots like this. The person that went into Lily Polanski's house that night rode a bike. That's something very unusual to see around this time of the year. Do you ride a bike in the winter? Yeah, but not that night. I take my bike out sometimes to do the errands and save some gas. You need to explain these facts. Because we have a lot of people working this investigation, and you and I both know 
that sooner or later, we'll find evidence that links you to the missing girl. You have the opportunity right now to take a bit of control and explain some of this. I told you already, I was at my place. Your chance to tell the truth is going fast. And you and I both know that you were at Lily Polanski's house. No, I wasn't there, I was at my place. I've never been there. Well, I brought with me Mr. Smith, who was your psychiatrist last year before you decided to quit therapy. He had some very interesting things to tell us. How dare you drag him into this? What we talked about was a secret. When was this therapy? Last year? Yes. What did you tell him? Well, they've asked me. Police questioned me in my own practice. I, I didn't know what it was all about. So you recognize that Mr. Smith was your, was your doctor last year? Yes, he was my doctor. How often do you have nightmares? I don't know. Rarely. Detective, he has nightmares almost every night. Repetitive, not in his dreams. It's not true! Knock it off! Tell us about this dream that you have every day. What dream? I have dreams just like everybody else. Do you want to tell me your dream? Or do you want me to tell you? It's just a dream for God's sake. Please tell us. All right. A beast is chasing me, wants my food. No matter how hard I try, I can't escape. I can't run through the thick snow. That's all. Go on. In the end, I go into an open area, and I dig a hole, and I bury my food, but it's too late. The beast comes and devours me. What you buried wasn't food. What you buried was Lily Pulaski. We both know you were there. You rode a bike to Lady Polanski's house that night. You stepped on the snow with your boots. And after abusing the poor girl, you buried her. Man, I wasn't there. I didn't, I didn't do anything. We found Lily Polanski buried a few kilometers away from your house. It wasn't, it wasn't me. I didn't do anything! I'm going to ask you to come to the police station with me. You'll be in charge with the murder of Lily Polanski. <laughs>